It's time for Breaking Bread with Papa. Hey! Don't you know? Hey! It's our goal. Hey! It's time for Breaking Bread with Papa. Hey! Don't you know? Hey! It's also a show. Hey! Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Breaking Bread with Tom, Papa, and Kira Sultanovich. <laughs> that sounded like you had bread in your mouth while you said it. <laughs> Maybe I did. I did bake two loaves last night. Oh, that's a euphemism for something else. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. Um, we're very excited to uh, welcome you to the table. We have, uh, we're going to have a swell time. We have a lot to cover today. And uh, Kira's got to drive to a gig in San Francisco. So let's not waste any time. Do you listen to podcasts when you do it? I do. Breaking bread? All the time. Yes. We'd like to thank our sponsor today. Bum, ba ba dum bum, bum. AG1. They've been a partner with us for a bit now. AG1 is the daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. Take ownership of your health. Every scoop is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, probiotics, and high-quality Whole food sourced ingredients. I uh, have the little packets in my backpack when I travel now, and I have a little uh, water bottle thing. Yeah. You put it in, you open up the pack, you put it in, shake it up, eight ounces down. Does it have one of those super healthy. springs in it that shakes it no, up? They're no, they're not stupid. <laughs> AG1 can give you major benefits like gut and mood support, boosted energy, and even healthier looking skin. I would like to tackle each of those gut and mood support. Boosted energy. These are all things we should actually talk about today. Yeah. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and free AG1 travel packs, which I just talked about, with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com. That's drinkag1.com slash papa. And that's drinkag1.com slash papa. More on those good people uh, in a little bit. We... Also are sponsored by an amazing show coming up at the Win in Las Vegas mm. on September second. Uh, I think it's I think the people that are performing, if I <laughs> if I can recall, it's uh, Kira Sultanovich uh -huh. and Tom Papa. Great lineup at the Win on Labor Day weekend. That's a fun show. It's going to be a really fun show. Uh, so come see that. Also, my book, "We're All in This Together," so make some room, is uh, still rocking and rolling. We're going to sell books in Anaheim. Joey, are you coming to Anaheim for the big show? I'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, you going to be helpful? I'll try to be helpful. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, we also like to thank um, our good buddy. Uh, Eric, who you guys are not going to meet, he's not on microphone, but he's a good pal of mine, and uh, he's a cameraman extraordinaire, and he's helped me out on my radio show before, and uh, he's here, and he's high, and it's early. Oh, that's good. That's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's really I like to know. know what people's base is. <laughs> yeah. This is his morning base. Yeah. Yeah. He said like F stop and things like that. I know. And then I was like, whoa, this guy really knows his stuff. Joey was really, uh, I'm, I'm a little, we, we're going to have to make a commitment because we have Joey working the board, mm -hmm. but he's also known to our listeners by his nickname, Abraham Lincoln. Sure. And then after we had the kerfuffle in the steakhouse he's also known as four ounce four ounce because he's the only person to have ever ordered a four ounce steak in a steakhouse i didn't even know they sold them that I, small i didn't either not that size matters joseph <laughs> yeah joseph definitely doesn't work joseph doesn't work no i like joseph i don't like joseph why not you do yeah because it's formal mm -hmm. you know this is a professional setting joseph right four ounce Four ounces better. Abraham Lincoln. Not great. <laughs> Not a Abraham fan. Lincoln doesn't really stick. It's it's a, it's a mouthful. But I just love the idea of having an assistant who people out in the world, when they interact with Tom Papa Inc., they have to write Abraham Lincoln or call for Abraham Lincoln. That's a weird thing to me. <laughs> Why does that excite you? I don't understand. Like I want, I get very excited thinking somebody has to call Joey Abraham Lincoln. 
Yeah, it's just funny to me. <laughs> All right, but it's not working. We've tried it for a bit, and it's not. I still think, you know, we we give them a nickname that highlights an accomplishment. Mm -hmm. That way it's not mean. Well, Abraham Lincoln is a great man. Yes, who was shot in the head. Well. Well. There's always, there's there's always like, ne'er-do-wells out there. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, something that he did really great. Like, we call him, you know, F-stop. You know things that like he could do you that can't would throw make him another one in. Feel good. He didn't even know what f stop was. That's what Jerry, I'm. Joey's been trying to get our cameras right for a while now, and God bless him. He's a comedian. He's a podcast producer. He's a assistant. He does it all. He does it all. One thing he does not know is uh, any part of a camera. <laughs> When Eric was asking for f stop, Joey was literally almost threw up. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it in his uh, face. So that would be bad to call him f stop because it'll make him sweat every time. Okay, but I'm just saying something that that highlights four ounce is pretty good. All right, but I it's derogatory. I mean, it's not it's not an accomplishment. No, by any means. No. How I'm much uh, how much steak would I have to eat to graduate out of the out of the four ounce name? I like the you, name. A 16 ounce. Yeah, 16? 16. I've done 12 already. 16 and not right. over a year. <laughs> work, work your way up. Okay. Okay. I had a nice uh, 16 ounce last night. Ooh, yeah. where did you go? Oh, I went to this great place. Uh, we went to an Italian place called Basta mm -hmm. with a B mm -hmm. in Agora Hills. It sounds like someone from Jersey trying to say bastard. Yeah, Basta. Yeah, yeah, Basta. Uh, I don't think from Jersey. Maybe Massachusetts. Or maybe England. Okay. okay, fine. Keep going. I don't like you, you basta. Yeah, there you go. That's more Scottish yeah. or Irish. <laughs> Actually, it's a bad idea. It's just basta. Okay. And it was uh, it was a great place run by all Italians, um, which is what my people are called in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. Italians. And great. And you got steak, a steak. pastas, pizzas, mm. wood fire. Mm. So good. Here in LA. I just said Where? Agora Hills. Agora Hills. Okay. I was I'm not listening to most of what he says. <laughs> you're, you're so worried about leaving for your game. I just have to go. My car is <laughs> double parked. I left it We've on. We've got plenty of time. I left it on. It's, it's running. It's not gonna make any difference if we go a half hour later than we wanted to. Okay, it's fine. Uh Agora Hills. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Great place. Yeah. And there was actually, we performed in Thousand Oaks, right? Yeah. That's there a was, nice thing. I was waiting to go in, and somebody recognized me and was saying that they're coming to my show in Thousand Oaks, like in the fall. Mm -hmm. And he was going off about this place, how great it is. He's actually getting married there this weekend. And then he went too far and made me go meet his fiance. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to wash my hands. Uh very nice people. Uh, so good luck to you guys. I hope you're still together come Thousand Oaks time. Uh, but pasta, so good. And my family's all veggie. Mm. I am not. So I went with the uh, 16 ounce. And I said to them when I was ordering, what if I had a fourth of this? And they said, what do you mean? And I said, what if I just want four ounces of this meat? And they said, lean in. And I leaned in, and he slapped me right in the face. Yeah. And he says, we do not do four ounces. Yeah. What, 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 do, what is wrong with you? They're still laughing right now. They're still laughing. They're still laughing 15 hours later. <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't make well, sense. Truth be told, I got through probably 12 ounces of it. Okay. And then That's for the love of my dogs, I said, give me a box. Yeah. I mean, four ounces is like saying just the tip. <laughs> It's the same thing. You so, know, you So it doesn't and in the guy's mind it doesn't count. It doesn't count. And also it's 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 laughable. <laughs> it is laughable. Because what is that giving you? Yeah. Nothing. What is it giving anybody? That's nothing. It's a nothing. It's a nothing. Yeah. So So Well you work your way up, Joey. I have faith in Joey. The thing is he weighs four ounces. That's why it's difficult. That's why it's funny. That's why it's difficult. That's why it's funny. To ask him to do, you know. When you came in today yeah. and you saw him and you said, hey, four ounce, <laughs> it really made me happy. Oh, okay. Well, then let's stick because with that. he's literally four ounces. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
not Joseph. Joey, why, why are we? Why, we are Why are we just you. determining your fate? I don't know. I don't know. I I think I can do this steak thing. I think I can go all the way up. You to, can do uh, it. To you, so you think right you now you're going to be called four ounce until you eat a? I feel like it can't just be like. How much steak does a normal person eat? I eat that. I feel like it has to be beyond that before I evolve to. So whatever else. amount of meat you eat, we're gonna nickname you. So right now you're four ounce, and you will remain four ounce until I guess I take him to another. You gotta take house. him to Basta. Because <laughs> he's also poor. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Until we take you to another steakhouse and you eat more, and then we change your nickname to eight ounce, sixteen ounce, thirty-two ounce. I want Eye of the Tiger to be playing over this montage of, of Joey just sitting there and he's training. You know what I mean? He's taking bites and he's chewing and then he like passes out. And then, you know, he's in a hoodie. And they're closing. They're putting all the chairs up on the tables. He's still trying. Yeah. He's running with you like a fork and a steak at the end of it. And he's doing. I, I would love to see that montage. I tell you, after eating that steak last night, I felt great. But you had pasta with it. No, I did not. Oh, good. No. Okay, just a steak. And I was thinking about you the whole time. Thank you. I did not pasta up. I did I, have one slice of pizza, which was very small, though. Can I tell you, I was thinking about you recently. I was eating a steak with a cup of coffee. <laughs> which I know. What are you, a detective from I the 50s? Know. I I have got <laughs> Like, I will text Tom I'm eating Indian food with coffee right now. I'll have curry with coffee. I know. It's weird. I don't care. I can have. Co it doesn't matter. I know. It's so weird. I love you it. You can have. I know. I'm so, I was just, I was like getting coffee this morning and I was like, I should grab extra for Kira, but it's early. There's no way she's not going I've to have coffee. I already had two. And you walked in, you had already. Had I, it. I was going to bring it in here. Yeah. And I just doused it all yeah. over. Yeah. Summertime. Mm hmm. We're all on fire. Thoughts and prayers to all of our friends in Hawaii, by yeah. the way. Uh, everything's on fire. Super hot. Early morning, you can go hot coffee. If you grab a coffee at two in the afternoon in Burbank, yeah. What's your order? I, I I'll do an ice, but I like a hot coffee you do ice. even at hundred and ten so degrees. Do I. I was in Phoenix a few weeks ago, and I got a coffee, and she was like, "That's iced, right?" And I said, "No, baby. <laughs> no, mama, mama likes it. Hot. I like it hot too. Yeah." So, but you'll go ice once in a I'll while. Go, just sure, to not, sure. Just when you don't want to feel like a freak. Right. No, yeah. but I, I, I want it hot. I know. Me too. I heard a new Alfred's is opening up. Uh, What's an Alfred's? You don't know Alfred's coffee? I don't know Alfred's coffee. Oh, it's oh, a good coffee what, spot. What is it? Eric, you know Alfred's, right? Yeah. Okay, Eric. Well, he's a hipster who lives in Silver Lake. We yeah. can't go to Eric for anything. <laughs> he's going to know. He knows Basta. He, knows, he knows Alfred's. And he knows F-stops. It's a good coffee place. Okay. This area where we record yeah. does not have great coffee spot. Down, down towards, more towards Sepulveda. I'll, I'll share it with you. Yeah. Amazing. Really? Yes. Do you know the name of it? Yes, I do. May I look it up, please? You go ahead. You okay. got nothing but time. Are we You're pausing? Not What's happening? Commercial break. Let's, uh, it's, um, my, I personally think it's some of the best coffee on Ventura Boulevard. I said it. I said it. Jeez. You've been there. You've been there. Here. I have? Yeah. I don't think so. Uh, you've I went been to a comic book store on Ventura. So I'm trying to get a new um, hobby because my family is uh, falling apart. Not falling apart. They're going to college. And I'm going to need some hobbies for when I get high in the middle of the afternoon. <laughs> and um, I've learned a little something about comics. Uh, I thought they were all just uh, the same. Just a... Uh, same way I thought about maybe like uh, what's electronic music like uh, EDM EDM it's like it's all the same right and then you get into it and you're like no there's better same thing with comics there's like oh no there's comics that are amazing and look amazing and it's really funny writing and then there's other ones that are just garbage well yeah that's with everything yeah but I, I thought all, all comics were garbage oh I see <laughs> Tortino Never been there. Oh. Don't even think it's real. No, 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 no. For realsies. It's an Italian restaurant that sells coffee no, in the back. I'm sorry. Tortoni. 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 Which is a pasta. 
Tortoni. Uh, Tortoni is on Ventura in Sherman Oaks, my friend, oh. and it is delicious. Okay. Here's what it looks like. If you s you've probably seen it on the street. Let me see that. Um, have you been there, Mr. Silver Lake? I know of it, but no. Eric knows of it, sure. He knows of it? Yeah, right. He knows of it. M Street is pretty solid. It's down the street from here. M it's Street's not bad. annoying. It's not bad. It's not it's bad. It's annoying. I've been Everyone's there. in there camped out. No, no, they've I'm not. they all got rules. They've all, they're all, they're all douchebags. Yeah, I'm Not the people you. that run it. They're great people. But the clientele, P-U. Yeah, no, Tortoni. Tortoni, did I say that right? My friend, I went Amazing. to meet him at, the, at this coffee shop, and... I go to meet him and I'm on the, the mile long line and he's set up on his little chair and he couldn't get up to come say hello to me because the soccer moms and hipsters would have taken his chair. Like it's so cutthroat yeah. to like have a space that he, he couldn't even, I'm like, what am I doing here? I have a coffee maker have at you, home. Have you been down to Larchmont lately? I know. Okay. Let me explain to you what's happening okay. in Larchmont. Okay. Uh, we were in Koreatown and driving to the valley. Show off. So we decided let's stop off in Larchmont, get the kids some ice cream. Okay. okay? Uh, they have the same salt and straw we have here in Studio City. Yeah. Okay. But then they have some bakery that's come from Bedford Stuyvesant, you know, some Brooklyn thing where it's like it's lemon zest and it's gluten free and there's no seafood. What? Like all the, there's no allergy, nothing. There's nothing in it. So I thought, oh, this might be interesting. Yeah. Line around the block. Yeah. Some guy told me he's been there since they opened. And he's waiting. And it's like the best cupcakes. Like people that go crazy for cupcakes. Yeah. I'm sorry. You're lunatics. You're lunatics. You're lunatics. You have something missing in your life. And they stand in line for their bread. I don't even know what it's called. But there's like people on large, it's like a huge uh -huh. massive cupcake. You walk through like a cupcake door. <laughs> you know, like it's it's Disneyland. And they're like, there's only one of these in LA and it's from New York and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's people waiting in line for salt and straw. There's just lines. I know. There's lines. Well, salt and straw is pretty brilliant with that. It where is. they create. It's yes. the same as the Laugh Factory. They create a line. They, they yes. hold people, so there's a line. That's right. And then everybody wants to go into the line. And nothing's worth it. <laughs> I There's nothing. There's no. Uh, look, well, they, this whole podcast is built out of our love of the food experience. And there's nothing worth standing in a line like that. There's literally nothing worth it. If you're on a first date... Mm. And this is like what you do. You stand in line. You're getting to know each other anyway. And you're chatting. And there's people sitting. And everyone's having their sauerkraut flavored ice cream from yeah. Salt and Straw. Because those are the flavors, by the way. Yeah. They'll trick you with like, oh, there's caramel and chocolate. And then they'll have a roast beef. Like yeah. a roast beef <laughs> yeah. ice cream with mashed potatoes <laughs> is the flavor. Yeah. And, you know, and that's okay. Cause, but we have two kids with us. Right. Who are sitting there grabbing at their crotch and farting on each other and tattling. And that's my nickel. Yeah. And they'll literally <laughs> find belly button fuzz and fight over it. And I go, I'm not standing in line no. for you two douchebags. Why are you in that line? You should be in a supermarket I know. getting a gallon I know. of uh, chocolate, strawberry, <laughs> and, vanilla, yes. and going back home. That's it. You shouldn't even be out of the house. I, but we're trying to be nice to our kids. No, don't. And that's what happens. You try to do something nice, no. and then they want to get in line for this cupcake yeah. you know, factory place across the street. There was a line for a cafe. There was a line for... This just, <laughs> Larchmont is just a line. Just when you get now to let Larchmont, me ask you this, though, get in line. Because my... my Daughters are 21 and 18. Yeah. And they, we, I don't know how it went. We got one, we had one of them and then we picked up the other one and they hadn't seen each other in a beat. And I heard my daughter and we, they wanted to go to like Dunkin' Donuts or something. I'm like, nope, look at that line. And I heard my daughter say to my other daughter, oh yeah, dad doesn't stand in lines anymore. And I was like, yeah, well, first, yeah, I don't. But is this a new thing? Have I just reached an age of crankiness? Yeah. Have I become my father who literally does not even go out of the house in anticipation of a line? Right. Like he doesn't even know if there's a line to wherever he has to go, but he <laughs> assumes there is. So he just doesn't leave anymore. It's a good assumption. I don't. I also don't want to be that. You know what I mean? Right. I 
so am I, my question is, am I, should I stand in some lines? Just Look, to keep a youthful uh, joy. You and I travel a lot together, and you and I went through TSA pre, and mm-hmm. there were three people in front of us. Yeah. And you and I both were like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> Why does this airport have clear? What is and then we did. We went into the clear. Like <laughs> it was like three people and you and I were I was writing a letter yeah. to the head of LAX. Like it's, <laughs> Yeah. It, I'm with you. I I do feel like later in life. Yeah. Cuz you've been there. We've stood in lines already. I we've done all the we lines. We know the lines. We know how awful this is. And we we don't, know it's not worth it. And I don't, here's my thing that I do now, and I feel like it's old age and getting cranky. I don't want any loud noises. Oh. I don't want any repeti- I don't want any repetition. So I, I have an eight-year-old who mm-hmm. likes to just go, blah, 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 <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And, I, and then I start hearing that, and yeah. I start to just lose my mind. Like, smoke uh-huh. is coming out of my ears. And I, and I made a rule a while ago. Nobody follows it, but I said... No more loud noises. I want you to whisper your joy and your playing. Like, I want you to act this like. This is why people should have babies when they're 18. This, yes. <laughs> this is my no wire hangers. Like, I will lose my shit. Yeah. I feel like, who's the pirate in Peter Pan? Uh, that, like, the ticking Captain of. Captain Hook. Thank you. The, the, the tick tock, the uh-huh. ticking, the crocodile with the clock. That. Yeah. I, I want to kill somebody. <laughs> if I hear a sound, like that's my version of I don't want to wait in line. Well, the, well the, the sound thing, there is a, you start to lose your hearing yes. slightly over time. Yes. And you can't, where young people hear multiple levels, it starts to flatten out. And it becomes irritating because you can't, every, every noise is the noise. So... Where a young person would hear the little clock during Peter Pan and also hear the music and also hear something else. Right. And it all kind of blends and is beautiful. And then your ears get crunchy and whatever annoying sound, that's going to be the dominant thing banging in your head. And that's why I'm there too. I can't have like bath, if a bathroom fan's on, forget it. Oh my God. Or if you're out in a, if, if this is old and shitty, but if you're in a nice, fun restaurant and you can't hear the people, because there's music playing and everyone's yeah, talking and stuff, you end up not being able to hear because you can't that filter is out the those sounds. That is pinnacle of old, That's by the way. That's really old That and really shitty. is. And like all I have in my head is Colin Quinn. Because why? Because he was the first. He was, he's a little older. He, well, a lot older. Uh, he's a little older. So he was dealing with that when we would get together and have meals and stuff. And I was like, oh, no, poor Colin. And now, like, I'm close to having that now we get it yeah yeah Yeah. i'm i just bad i told them this morning yeah i said sit in silence Mm -hmm. that's That's it just sit if they make a noise do you hit them (laughs) no because the sound of my hand hitting them is also a noise so it just perpetuates more noise okay but can we separate the noise for a second from the line thing because i feel like the line thing is not a physical malady. If it, the line thing is your attitude, I don't think we're wrong, but I also don't want to be old and shitty. Right? No, you got to stand in line. Yes. Yeah. You have to. It's it is part of some things, mm-hmm. but not for like some cupcake from Brooklyn. No. No, I'm not doing that. And this was wrapped around the the street. Yeah. And these people are like lunatics in my mind. There's. One of the true moments of joy in my life is when I'm (laughs) online in a coffee shop and you walk in and there's 20 people in the second line, which is now a mass, Uh waiting for their dumb orders. Yeah. So they just stood in line and then they said, I want a caramel something, something latte with a thing of pajama. And then they go and they stand and wait again. Yeah. When I walk in and say, one black coffee, please, yeah. and they just hand it to me, and I walk past that second line, there is a lightness in my step. It's a power There's an move. arrogance. Yeah. I feel like, did you dummies even notice what I just did? Did you notice the magic trick yeah. that I just achieved? 
yeah, I don't have caramel in my thing, but I have beautiful, beautiful coffee, and you're all morons. 100%. I feel the same. Is it I, wrong to call them morons as I leave? Probably. Out loud? Yeah. Mm. Because we have two youngsters here who probably do order the thing. Who, with four the, ounce and Eric? You know, something with a <laughs> is not a coffee. If it's a <laughs> it's not a coffee anymore. You yeah. ordered a cake in a cup. What size do you think four ounce orders in a coffee shop? I'd say four ounces. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, four ounce coffee? No, four is little. No, four is little. That's is probably, probably eight. eight. Or is that 16? No, it's not 16. It's eight? Okay. Yeah. How sad. Americans are, we don't know anything. <laughs> you go to Canada and they're like, how many kilos of coffee would you like? I'm like, what? They're measuring in milliliters. <laughs> All right, since we, uh, since I last saw you, I know yeah. you were um, hosting a, uh, I have to host I want to host. I am hosting my wife's birthday nice. party tonight. <gasps> tonight. Tonight. Fun. Did a good thing. Um, we're doing a, it's a taco keg party. Yes. I approve. Right? Yeah, that's fun. Tacos out. Keg stands. And man, I, there's no one in this guest list. <laughs> That can do a that keg can do stand. a keg stand. My daughter actually tried showed me a picture of her friend trying to do a keg stand. It was like seventeen, and she, she couldn't hold her little arms up. Really? <laughs> she just uh, collapsed onto the keg. It was this very is the funny. problem with this generation. Yeah, yeah they don't really know. It's because they're kegs. all vegetarian. That's why they don't have arm strength or iron in their blood. <laughs> I ordered uh, I ordered red solo cups from Costco at Good. one point, and I you know we used six of them, and there's two thousand of them still in my utility closet so i'm like i'm gonna have a keg party just to get through some more cups genius yeah it's gonna be a good party that's very easy it's very it's gonna be fun i I just have people roll in everyone has a laugh that they're drinking out of a keg again we're all sitting around the keg like we're 17 it'll be great you are at a stage where you're not having keg parties you're having parties for children yeah and that is a a a level of hell that people don't really understand. You know, let me just start off by saying this. You're out of this phase already in I your am. life. But did you ever come up against the challenge of your daughters making friends at yes. school, at summer camp, at whatever, Girl Scouts, whatever they did, and then you meet the parents mm. and you cannot stand the parents? And you don't know what to do now because the daughters love each other and they want to hang out and they always want to have play dates and they want to go to the beach together. And that and that means you have to be intimate with yeah. these adults yeah. that you cannot look at even. Well, here's a little tip. When that does happen, yeah, you take your child aside or not even aside, just at dinner or when you're doing the dishes or when you're tucking them in at night and you create awful rumors about that child. <laughs> You know, Mackenzie said you can't do a cartwheel. Yeah, Mackenzie said she's better at gymnastics than you are. Well, that feels like a Mackenzie thing to say. (laughs) Totally. And then uh, you you make them break up. That's heartbreaking. It's, see, it'll make your, okay, so at this party. So that's what I'm saying. I'm torn because I would feel terrible. Yeah. So my eight-year-old, you've met her, but she's different now like she's gotten a little bit older and she's a little bit socially awkward Uh and so she'll say things to people and she doesn't know how to (laughs) like actually like be a friend sometimes Uh you know what i mean and so i'll introduce her to a little girl and the little girl's like hi my name's you know sydney and my daughter's like (laughs) armpit farts and then runs off and then kicks a squirrel Uh you know what i mean and then comes back with like a mouthful of dirt she's a weirdo she's a weirdo and so when she does make a friend i go all right, I got to give this Let's a chance. But then the mom was an absolute psycho. Really? And you know those moms that just never stop like asking you questions? Uh-huh. Where'd you get that shirt? What do you guys vacation? What shoe size do you wear? Are you allergic to penicillin? Like, uh, oh, oh no. God, take a breath. So they come to our house and yeah. there's a four-year-old brother. God bless four-year-olds. They don't know anything. No. But he's humping the mom's leg. Ooh. The entire time. Oh, boy. And I don't know if you've ever been subject to watching a kid have a tiny baby orgasm, but it is horrifying. 
horrifying. We may, four ounce, we might have to cut this. We might have to cut all of this, but listen closely (laughs) for the people that have not tuned out yet. You don't break eye contact with the mom because the minute you look at the kid humping and making sounds. Oh, geez. I know. Now I feel like I'm part of your scenario here. So I'm just staring at the mom and I'm trying to find a way out so I don't have to be a part of his very personal private time at a party hundreds of people you know what i mean like okay, this was in the middle of the party middle of the party just uh uh like a four-year-old <laughs> and he's um, and she's sitting cross-legged and he's just riding her leg <laughs> oh, and no. i have to go but there's so many questions being fired at me that i don't see an out and i just go oh okay i'm so, oh, da, da. and i go oh coming making up you know <laughs> yeah. an excuse and then she's like oh by the way and asks me another list now she's like of, walking across the room with the kids still attached to the leg. I mean, he he was he did not stop the entire party. Now listen, I I have Here, kids. Yeah. I know we've talked about this. Yeah, they they do they they find themselves right. But, Whatever. But you're allowing this, so that means this is not the first time. There's no way. And this, this is, is the in first public. Time. This is in public, and you're not saying anything yeah this is what's happening we're letting kids just push the boundaries of decency i mean it's not decent if your kid can't do a keg stand i'm sorry (laughs) i blame parenting i and if your kid is humping i blame parenting too this is this was my strategy we never had that exact scenario i don't know anyone that has (laughs) this is very Um, but i would uh a, a good term someone taught me uh, to be very direct about stuff in, at certain points. And if someone has some behavior that you don't like uh, in your house, you say to them, I'm sorry, you have to leave now. No. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You would really do that? Yeah. I did it to my parents last time they visited. Did you really? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have done that. I did that once to my mom. You did? So speaking of of, of spanking, uh-huh. she she spanked my three year old, my first one. Right. And I went upstairs and I packed her clothes in her luggage and I zipped it up and I brought her luggage downstairs and I said, "We're going to the airport." Whoa! So really? I have done that. And did you I go? Ha- or was yeah, that- I took her. I took her. She. I took her to Burbank and she flew home. Really? A few days early. Did she protest? Um, she knew, she knew, she knew. yeah, she knew. Because it was out of anger, she snapped. You know, he's a three-year-old and there was a coffee table full of stuff and he just took his arm and just, boom, yeah. all of it onto the floor, papers uh-huh. flying and stuff breaking and things spilling. And so she walloped him. Whacked him. And I didn't think that was appropriate at all. Do you ever spank your kids? No. Yeah, me neither. Now, I will say I've grabbed their wrist nice and hard. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like a nice, right. firm. Stop I've, humping I've gra- the neighbor. Stop humping, <laughs> stop humping my leg. <laughs> but, you know, or I've, I've grabbed, I will say, I have given them a, a you know. Right. A listen, look at me. Yeah, but that's know. different. That's different from a spank. A spanking no. is a different thing. A spanking is you sit there and you're continuously... You know what I mean? There's no end until whatever poison inside of the adult finally comes out. It's really about the adult. It's totally about the adult. It's about, yeah, it's about temper. It's about losing it. It's Rich Scheidner once said something to me that really like, woof, I felt it. Uh And he was spanked a lot as a kid. Yeah. And so was I. Yeah. And he said, I never wanted to spank my kids because I was worried I wouldn't be able to stop. (laughs) Oh, <laughs> and I go, dude. Because it's like the dumb ape like well, reaction. It's because it's what you were raised with. Right. And I go, dude, I feel that. Right. Am I saying that correctly, youngsters in the room? What, dude? No. Dude, oh, I, I feel I that. I feel that, right? Like they yeah. right? Like that, that's what the kids are saying. Same. Same girl, that. same. I'm sorry. <laughs> um I feel that I it's not No, but they're saying that's it. That's not trendy. What do you guys have on your t-shirts? I feel that. <laughs> you guys have that on your t-shirts. Come on. I feel that. I I, I learned something that um that uh Riz, you know what Riz is? Sure. That Riz was started by that guy that started the Union Square riot. Did you know the know. you don't what? know the Union Square thing? No, I didn't know that he started it. But. Yeah. What? I don't know how they're he connected. He started Riz. He, 
you know the Union Square guy who uh, is an influencer. He has a Twitch channel. And oh, he said the he right a few out days a, ago. He, he said he was yes. going to give out a PlayStation. Okay. And uh, he only brought like one, and everybody went crazy lost and minds. lost yeah. their minds and started beating up uh, Uber drivers and stuff. And uh, he was now he, now he's facing charges for starting a riot. I didn't realize he started Riz. Joey, do you know what Riz is? I do know what Riz is. What is it? It's uh, it's like game or charm. Charms? Right. I don't know what charm is. You know where Riz <laughs> came from. What? Like, what's Riz short for? Riz is short for... Um, you know I assumed it was Rizzo. I do know it. Rizzo from Greece. That's what I assumed. <laughs> no? Am I wrong, guys? Yeah. Oh. Dang it. I don't know Charisma. what Riz is. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Riz. But apparently, this Twitch guy is the one who started it. And which made me think... We may be going after this podcast in the wrong way. Oh. We we come in, we do like an hour, we have some fun, we tease four ounce. Uh, this guy, and I don't know his name. It's uh, Kai Sinat. I don't care to know his name. <laughs> uh, he does like marathons on Twitch. Like he would play games and then he would like hang out and like do stuff and he just had his channel and he's got Riz, he's got charisma, and he stays on it for like like 24 hours. Well, he doesn't have a, a job. It is his uh, job. That's his job. So he doesn't have Making millions. Kids, making millions. So Does what you're saying your is thought? you want us yes. to, how long? Yes. Okay, there's a two hour meter out in front. That's <laughs> my max. I think we might have to go... Just until we can't go any longer. I have something called DRI, which is, is short duty? for laundry. Oh, laundry. <laughs> and uh, IDS, which is short for kids. Uh, and I just shorten all my words. Ick up, which is pick up. Well, you know, when I watch your act and I hear you talk on the podcast about your family, uh-huh. I feel like maybe spending more time here would be... Better. better, better for everybody. Better for you, better for them. Um, I told my 12 year old, he's 12 and a half. I said, I'm gonna take you to the doctor because mm-hmm. I think you have asthma. Uh huh. And he was like, <laughs> <laughs> because he wheezes like that about everything I say. Uh-huh. I go, I think you might have a medical condition. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> like he's just, I go, what happened to you? Yeah. He was skipping. Three days ago. I swear to God, he was a kid skipping, and uh-huh. now he's like, Ugh. Oh, God. And I go, dude, I'm going to get you an yeah. inhaler because you sound like like <laughs> Wheezy Joe. And he doesn't and get it. He, they, I don't know. I, I, I yeah. love my family. Am I supposed to say that? Does that make everyone feel better? No, all you have to I love my family. All you have to say is, I can't wait to do this podcast for three hours. Let's do it. Let's do a three hour Ooh. podcast. I would like to do 24. The next one we do, the next one we do uh next week we're okay. going to go super long. Oh, Jesus. And we're going to work on our riz <laughs> and we're going to see if we can't get a riot in uh Sherman Oaks. Oh, what are we giving away? We're giving away bread. Mm, but only only bring one loaf. <laughs> if we went online and said yeah and said uh, all our baking breadsters <laughs> turn up we're giving up. We're, we're giving out bread in Sherman Oaks. Yeah. There would be one middle-aged guy. Yeah. Possibly. Like, I heard there might be a thing. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd be disappointed because we wanted to start a riot. we wanted to start a riot. Yeah. It didn't happen. Uh, what, do you want to know about how I ended my day yesterday or how I started my day today? Well, I know about the basta yesterday. Basta was, okay. basta was the end. Was... Yeah. Okay, let's see. Well, how'd you start your day? How'd I start my day mm-hmm. today? Mm-hmm. In the most horrible of ways. Oh. And I don't, I, I did it because of you. Oh, great. Because you had an early, we needed to do this early. Oh, put it on me. Because you uh, wow. have kids or whatever. You, I don't know what your excuses are. Uh, you know who wouldn't uh, have complained? That guy who started the riot in Union Square. <laughs> uh, so I went for my... Dentist appointment at oh, 8 a.m. Oh. 8 a.m. dentist appointment. Yeah. And as I was sitting there with metal being jabbed into my gums and and very derisive 
comments from the person doing it saying, do you have a toothbrush? <laughs> uh, uh, I was like, this is a horrible way to start your day. Yeah. And it just, it's just, uh, this is having someone in your mouth. Well, well, okay. Keep going. Who doesn't like you. <laughs> okay. Again, <laughs> most married people keep going. Uh, just a horrible, horrible way to start your day. Just having somebody, she's just going in there and, and then they do the gum check. You ever have that? Yeah. Where they check your gums. And they relay the number. And relay to the, the number. the dental assistant. Yes. Three. Three. Two. two five. Oh, God. Five. <laughs> five. Six. You're really going to have to. You're going into F stops now. Do you man. have a, uh, what's the, what'd she say? What's the thing that squirts water in your mouth? A water pick? Do you have a water pick? Do you have a toothbrush? Do you floss? Are you a grown up? <laughs> <laughs> Does your wife make you brush your teeth? She actually had the nerve to ask me, how long do you brush your teeth? Oh my God, shut up. At night, well, how long no. do you brush your teeth? I said, what do you, what? I don't know. And she said, okay, I need you to do this. I need you at least once a day. I need you to brush your teeth for two minutes on top and two minutes um, on the bottom and get your gently with your gums i'm like i'm gonna stand there for four minutes i don't know the answer to your question how long do i brush my teeth but i guarantee you it's what you're asking is probably three minutes and 45 seconds longer than i'm doing it i'm not doing four minutes no i know i threw a lot of math at you just now you but did and i was stuck on two minutes on top two minutes on bottom that's also, absurd isn't a married it? sex life is what i was stuck on. <laughs> that's, that's also married sex life would, um <laughs> you know they're very patronizing yeah dentists very yeah and i get it like i get why because nobody likes them and so they kind of have you know, they have a little bit of a of a chip on their shoulder. They do. Like, you, you don't want to be here. Well, guess what? I don't want to be here You know either. that dark fact, right? Yes. Yeah. What's the dark fact? They don't have riz? No. <laughs> I think the people who um, commit suicide. Commit the most suicide doctors are dentists. Yeah. Yeah. I do know that. Yeah. I was traumatized as a kid. I told you this, didn't I? There was a Facebook group started about my pediatric dentist in San Francisco, about how awful he was. A group was started and oh, people no. f- floods of comments Oh no! for the youngsters in the room. Facebook is a social media, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so <laughs> and they were like, everyone was like, he was the worst, he, he made me cry, he was awful. He told my parents they couldn't come in the room. Like he Jeez. was, he was literally run out of the city. Wow. He was so bad. So there, I, there are some that do deserve it. Let me be clear. Yes. My, my dentist now, after a lifetime of really horrible, shitty dentist, yeah. this guy is great. Okay. This dentist is great. And she's actually kind of adorable. The hygienist who was poking my gums this morning. Yeah. But she really was just lays in on the insults. <laughs> Just this passive aggressive. Yeah. Well, because they. Do you grind your teeth a lot? Oh God, I hate when they. Yeah. Do you um? You have a weird jaw. Do you? Yeah. Do you, do you eat all sugar? <laughs> Are you on an all sugar diet? <laughs> Just so ridiculous. Do what? you prepare yourself? What's like, the matter, you- Joey? Uh oh. Oh no, I just wanted to jump in. Oh, oh four four Joseph. Yes. Four Stepping up. Um, one of my original like stand up jokes ever was how the dentist um, asking you if you floss your teeth is like your math teacher looking at your empty notebook asking if you did the homework. It's right. like, you know the answer. Like, wh- why yeah, are right. you asking? Yes. Me? That is true. That is the thing. They do know the answer. She knows. And, and, you, and she gets angrier the more she has to chip at your plaque. Right. She starts off like, great to see you. How are you? Yeah. Da, 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 da. And then she, as she's like in there, like, why am I starting with this animal first? <laughs> why am I, why is my arm sore at eight in the morning? I get it. But keep your comments to yourself. Our next partner is AG1, the daily foundation nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. Drink it literally every day. Uh, AG1 is this great, great pack. There's certain ways you cannot refer it because they've changed a little bit. Um, it is, this is how what I do. I start out in the morning and before I even have my coffee, 
you get eight ounces of water. You pour in this AG1, which is this green, like, powdery thing. Mm -hmm. You put it in there. You mix it up with the water. And you down it. And all of a sudden, you feel healthy. You feel like you did something. Mm. You feel... I feel like you would like this. Your skin is glowing. Is it? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, my God. Thank you. Uh, Why not take a bunch of different things when you can just... Why take a bunch of different things when you can just mix one scoop of powder in water? We have this thing in my pantry of uh, vitamins and supplements and potions. I know that you're going to say this is your pantry. Uh, You can wipe all that out. With AG1. You can just literally have little packets of stuff. You can't, but normal people. <laughs> Science-driven formulation of vitamins, probiotics, and whole food, whole food source nutrients. Every scoop is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, probiotics, and whole food sourced ingredients of high quality that give you a major benefit like gut and mood support, boosted energy, and even healthier looking skin. That's what you saw in me. Mm -hmm. It was the skin. AG1 is raising the standards for quality in the supplement category. Delivery and travel packs. This is my thing. You have these little travel packs. They're super easy. I just throw a bunch of them in my bag, one a day for whatever my trip's going to be, that little plastic thing. And I just mix them up when you're in a bad hotel, which we will be not at the win. No. But when we do our other dates and we're like at the days in on the side of the road Mm. after a four ounce that I found a good hotel for you and there's no coffee shop or food, you have your AG1 pack. You don't need it. And you you don't have to yell at four ounce. If you want to take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your purchase. A year supply. A vitamin D. That's pretty amazing. Go to drinkag1.com slash papa. That's drinkag1.com slash papa. Check it out. Uh, I legit, legit have added this to my routine. And um, I, I don't know if I look great, but I feel better. You do. What do they taste like? It tastes like, uh, good question. It tastes kind of like a, I don't know how to describe it. Kind of, I don't want to is it like kind a f- of Gatorade-y. Ooh. Like electrolytes? Like a, like a more natural Gatorade. Ooh, okay. That's you know a what good I mean? flavor, like yeah. Like you feel like it's going into your system. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, but it has a little bit of a... Um, a kind of like fruity-ish? Not fruity, more, um, more like a green drink. Oh, okay. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Well, green drinks sometimes have like a little apple taste. Yeah, this doesn't. No. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, I look forward to it. Okay, how did I in my day last yesterday? This is off of our conversation the other day about uh, activities. Oh. Uh, as part of my wife's birthday, you know, you were been together 23 years, right? So it's like, what kind of presents do you get? And my wife, I have to say, it's a pretty master stroke. We do it also with our, with our anniversary. We go someplace. Yeah. And pick a hotel and go somewhere rather than exchange gifts. For her birthday, she had the brilliant idea of um, go do some activity, do something fun on my birthday, and still give me gifts. (laughs) Genius. Yeah, genius. So yesterday, I was on a horse. I was on a horse. Uh not okay it's not okay i was like i'm not gonna bring a hat because they're gonna give me a helmet and uh because i've been on a i've been on them before they make them look like a hat but it's a helmet like if you see people yeah uh there was no helmet so i'm like oh i i'm gonna die today i'm gonna get thrown off this horse and i'm gonna hit my head on a rock because these people don't care and there was no helmet and i always this is the problem there's a if you go to these stables, my daughter loves riding horses. She's really good at it. She weighs twenty pounds. <laughs> my wife is a uh, thin, light individual. She can get on it, and the horse doesn't even know she's on. Um, my other daughter has kind of the same outlook on riding the horses as I do, which is, what are we doing? And I get put on the dad horse. There is the dad horse at these stables. And the dad horse is the poor son of a bitch that has to lug the fattest, heaviest person in the family. 
and it is depressed <laughs> and it is angry and it doesn't want you on its back. Its body's like a U. <laughs> it's a U. Yeah. It's literally a saggy backed, oh. dusty, poor old horse. And that's what I get to sit on. I saw a picture of myself. It, it looks like I'm riding the horse outside of a supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm this giant thing on the, and I'm holding. And everything I did apparently was wrong. Everything I did was wrong. The woman's in the back yelling at me. Dad, <laughs> arms arms out like you're pushing a cart. Dad, st- feet down, heels down. Dad, look up at the thing. Dad. And I'm like, I think I'm doing all the things. And the most upsetting part was it's kind of like when you when a dog doesn't like somebody and the dog owner's like, oh, I must be an asshole because he's got bad right. energy. The dog doesn't like him. She had the, the mentality of if you're just chill – and listen to instructions, then the horse knows and responds. It's when we get all, we fight and we have our own ideas and we're all balled up. And I'm like, I was trying to be chill. I was trying to be relaxed. But you kept yelling at me that my elbows are in the wrong spot when I know they're in the right spot. What, what the, and, my, and you put me on the dad horse who has Tourette's and is just bobbing his head and trying to eat. And just, he wants me off his back. And then she translated into, no, it's you. Was this your dental hygienist running the horse stable place? This is how, that's how I ended my day. And then I started my day. Do you even day have a horse at home? <laughs> Do you even know it's two minutes on a horse every morning? I literally, I, when I was in the chair getting the dentist thing, I was like, it, this is similar to the it's horse a similar thing. vibe. Yeah. <laughs> Were there, like, what's I'm your problem? I'm being criticized. Yeah. It's like, I'm pretty chill. I, I mean, maybe I'm more uptight than I think. Well, since we're dusting off old jokes, Joey, I used to have a joke about really opposing horseback riding. Uh huh. It's rude. <laughs> to ride the horse? It's rude. To what? To get on an animal and go, take me. It's rude to the way. horse. Yes. It's rude. Right. I'm sorry. I know that it's a sport and it's cowboys right. and that's how people get around. And my my <laughs> That's how people get around. My grandmother was almost born on a horse because uh-huh. that's what they had in 1911. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> right. they had a horse to take you to wherever, yeah. a doctor. Um, so I get it. It's like, I, I understand the transportation. I understand. Mm-hmm. But I I still think it's rude. If it someone jumped on, what if I jumped on your back and I was like, take me to Encino, you know, it's yeah, just. But what else are they going to do? Well, at Liv- least they have a job. No. You know, they can have a job. They can, they can. What? You know, we just want horses running wild. They can do other things. When I go to this fancy coffee shop on Ventura There's that you told no me about, barista. I don't want horses just running around. <laughs> I don't want like a horse block in the entrance. There's a horse at DMV, you know, <laughs> take, get, take your picture. I just, I, I feel um, awful for them. Mm-hmm. And yes, they can sense it. She's right. That dental hygienist horse lady is right. Yeah, she is they right. They can sense it because yes. they gave you a horse that you can feel doesn't want to be there. No. And that horse, if they do sense it, and yeah, I agree they do. Sure. They're like, oh, Great, I got another fat asshole. Yes, and then you're back. gonna feel it, and then you're gonna. And I'm like, I'm gonna, not fat. You're gonna. And he's re- like, Yes, you are. And I'm like, Well, you're stupid. And he's like, You're stupid. Yeah. And now we're on the edge of a cliff. My wife said every time she looked back, I just had this look of horror on my face. Where were you guys? It was on the on the face of it, beautiful. Okay. And Where was this? My wife and one daughter, and this was for. My wife's birthday had a wonderful time. <laughs> Loved it. And I liked being with them and seeing them happy and sure. doing the thing, but it hurt. Uh, my groin hurts so much right now. Yeah. From trying to squeeze this animal's midsection with my thighs. Yeah. Like a thigh master on a hot animal. It was in Malibu. Okay. Well, that's beautiful. Beautiful. We heard so, lots of stories about how the fires, before the fires, how much nicer it was. Oh, great. <laughs> you should have been here kind of stories. Oh, yeah. There was a time. Yeah. 
Um, you know, I've been on those where it's like a, a beautiful view or you're on the side of a mountain. Yeah. Or but I always, every time, yeah. I get the horse that has horrible diarrhea. Yeah. And it stops to do its business and its business sounds horrendous. And then everyone else leaves me. <laughs> <laughs> and every time, or just a horse that has bladder yeah. issues, or some sort of where they have to stop, and I get it, that's how they do their business. That was... But then everyone leaves, Yeah. and then the the leader goes, just tell them, yeah. And, <laughs> and then I'm going 80 miles an hour. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I'm not prepared to go 80 well, miles an hour. Well, we were not allowed to break formation because we are in these very precarious tiny trails ah. and you're going to fall off the side of the mountain if you, Jeez. right? So there's no room. So my wife's uh, horse was that horse, just taking dump after dump and yeah. pee after pee uh, right on my horse's head. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's another reason why and your I'm horse is sitting there like, pissed. <laughs> I get it. My horse was depressed. Um, it's like, I got, I'm eating yeah. horse shit and uh. this thing's peeing on me again. And I got, and this guy won't let me eat some berries off the side. It was really, it, it's a lot. It's I, just not my thing. It's not your thing. And it, look, I am with you a hundred percent. Yeah. Because we went once with some friends, and one friend didn't know she has a terrible horse allergy. Oh no! And in the middle of our little beautiful trail up yeah. the mountains, her eyes puff up, her whole face. She's like. <gasps> Oh, and no. she couldn't breathe. Oh, my God. So we have this emergency. <laughs> and, of course, no one's cell is working. This was actually flip phone times. Oh, my God. So there's no signal. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> no Kia means no signal. This was no Kia days. And we're just like, I'm like you're going to die. I told her, you're dying here. This is where you die. Because what are yeah. we going to do? She was like, carry me down. We're like... Fuck you. We're not carrying you down this hill. We'll put you back on the horse. She's like, oh, the horse is trying to kill me. So I just know to all of those activities. My and daughter loves your, it. She your loves, daughter it. loves it. What are you going to do? Cr but everyone was just criticizing me the whole time. Dad, just relax. Dad, put your arms up. Dad. And, and even the, the dental hygienist horse lady was like, wow, you guys really pile on dad a lot. <laughs> You gave him the worst horse. It was going off to the glue factory after this. Well, you know, we, yeah. what do you expect? Yeah, it was it was pretty rough. But they had a great time. Well, good. And then well, I got to go to Basta after, which was so great. The only bummer was I was driving. So, like, I would have, after that horse thing, I should have had three martinis, <laughs> like, immediately before the salads. Yeah. And I'm just, like, milking one glass of wine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you have two grown daughters who can drive. Uh, you don't allow them to drive? Yeah. When you're in the car? Nah, I have a nice car. Oh, yeah, I got gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> No, they can't drive that car. They can drive a Tesla. My best yeah. friend got her 16-year-old a Tesla. That's your best friend? Yeah. It's time to get a new friend. I know. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what? What, the probably the three, though, which is like 30. Oh, okay. Then right? it's fine. No, this one was like the. It had some custom stuff on it. Really? Yeah, there was some pink Tesla thing, and she was like, "Oh, that cost you twenty grand." <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, she got her. T I couldn't believe. It. I was like, "What in the world are you doing? Do you not remember you and I driving at sixteen in yeah. your VW Golf? <laughs> right. <laughs> that we just trashed. We drove yeah. on curbs. We drove. I mean, we was awful. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to drive. Yes. I don't. Yeah, and I don't want to put the pressure on my children for ha having to uh, try not to crash the Tesla and then end up kicked out of the family. White interior. White interior for teenage <laughs> girls with mascara? Yeah, what? forget it. No, they're doing their makeup in there. Yeah. I don't know. Forget it. Well, I'm going to go uh, have a keg party tonight, which is oh. the last chapter of the birthday excursion. and uh, But that's, that, that'll be fun. That's going to be great. Yeah. And then we, in just a couple of weeks, will be in Las Vegas. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, this is going to be exciting. I might sneak off to the Korean spa. Really? While you're yeah, there? Yeah. Uh, Maybe. We'll see. Yeah. Mm. Maybe. I won't. I know you won't, but I have a problem. Eat Caesar salads. That's fine. And I will sit and eat bulgogi. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
anything you want to let the people know where you're going to be performing without uh, me? Without you. Because we're also it going to be the same. Tacoma. Sure. And some other place. San Francisco. Portland. San Francisco and Salt Lake Utah. City. Yeah. That's going to be a good one. Yeah. What's the Tacoma one? The Tacoma and Eugene, maybe? Maybe. I don't know. You think I write these Go things down? Go to TomPapa.com. <laughs> All the dates are there. Uh, you guys are the best. I feel like we're forgetting something, Four Ounce. <laughs> no. We did it? I think we're good. Four-year-old humping. How did else? it look? <laughs> is this the best we've ever looked? I think it is, yeah. It, it is? Eric did a, did a great Eric job. Eric did a good job? Yeah. Yeah, Eric set the cameras to not anti-Semitic. <laughs> <laughs> is there a way to lock these in so Eric doesn't have to do this every time? I'll, um, I'll throw some tape on the floor. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah. All right, Eric, we'll see you next week. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. See you next time.